Hey, Seth here. Uh, ran into an issue this weekend that I'm sure multiple people have and figured out a nice workaround that I think deserves some explaining. The, what we had was the filament got stuck uh, in the printer while it was printing uh, and it didn't trigger any kind of warnings or anything so the printer kept attempting to print. We noticed it when we came to check on the print and it was printing like a centimeter into thin air, like way above the print. Uh, so stop the print, uh, try to figure out what's going on. So the question is how do you fix a print uh, that failed, but you didn't have like a power loss or a filament runout detection or something that froze the printer and the printer kept printing. Um, so that's what we're here to talk about. Um, so I've got the G code up right now and basically it's going to take uh, some editing of some G code, but I'm going to walk you through every step so hopefully you can redo it. But the first thing you need to do is actually go to the printer, uh, terminate the print, and then go into the move mode and then move the head until it's just barely touching the top layer. And the reason you're doing that is you're getting the height of the print. Now you can use calipers or, or something to measure the height, but you would still need to kind of figure out where the printer thinks that height is, which isn't always necessarily the same thing. Um, and this does that for you. It tells that it'll print out on the display. It'll say, hey, this is the Z height. Um, and it's most important to record the Z height. You can also fiddle with the X and the Y and you'll see how to do that in a minute, but you need to record that Z height, what the printer is. So let's say for our hypothetical here that we measure the Z height at 15.35, so 15.35. So we're in the G code now. What we're actually going to go do first is we're going to find out where that is. Where is 15.35 uh, in the G code? So I'm just going to do a Control F, and I'm using Notepad++. Uh, if you don't have Notepad++, it's free. I really suggest you go get it. It'll make this whole process a lot easier. And we're going to look for Z, and it's going backwards, so I'm going to swap it. Here we go. So we're just going to start clicking through and go, okay, where's 15.35 more or less? You can go faster by doing just Z15. There we go. There's an 08. That's close. Uh, 32. That's pretty close. All right. So 15.32. We'll call that the limit. So, and I'm writing it down. It's line 44116. So this is where that where it is commanded to go to the Z height. Now you'll see every command doesn't have a Z in it. So see, most of them are just X and Y like this. And that's because it's all based on the previous command. If you don't put anything new in, it assumes the same number. So basically all these commands here all execute at this same Z height. And that's how the printer prints, right? Bottom to top. So this is all the instructions below here that are printed at the 15.32 height. And uh, that's what we're working for right now. So basically everything above this, we're gonna call trash. Um, but we got to figure out where to stop at the top. So just remember that right now. This is our Z height, 44116. So you go up to the top in the header. First thing to know about code, if you don't already know this, anything with a colon before it like this, that's called a comment. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is a comment. This is a comment. This is a comment. And comment means it's not code that gets executed. It's there just to help you understand where the code is. It's like header end and header start. Just tells you where the header is. How great. Start G code starting a skirt, doing a skirt. So let's see, it just tells you where it is. So you don't have to worry about that. The first lines we're gonna zero in on here are lines 31 and 32. So M104 and M140 are the commands to set the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature respectively. So you see my nozzle set at 205, my bed is set at 70, okay? So those are just temps that you wanna make sure are correct for what you're doing. These might be the startup temps and then later in your G code, probably after your first layer, right, your, your temps probably reduce depending on what you're printing. But you're going to nuke all that. You're going to delete all that code. So you want to change these to what your mid print temps should be for you, not your first layer, but your mid print. And the same goes for M109 and 190. These commands are just what they say they are after the comment here, waiting for the hot end temperature and the bed temperature to hit these indications. So first it commands it go to 205 and then it says okay now wait until it's actually 205 that's what those two commands do so you need to change the hot end temperature and you need to change the bed temperature to be what your mid print temperature should be the next lines we're going to look at are lines 35 and 36 okay so g1 um, is a move command just like g0 so g1 says go to x negative 10 go to y negative 10 at uh, 30 millimeters per second and then go to z0 at a uh, 18 millimeters per second. You may recognize that that is how you start. So you remember how your nozzle kind of pokes off the end um, right before it does the nose wipe routine. So that's what this is. It's telling it to move there. Well, we don't want that because you're probably going to run into your print, right? So you're going to nuke those. 
nuke those two lines. And if you're you're you know concerned about nuking them, you don't want to like do something permanent when you, with your save as, uh, you can just comment them too. Same thing, the machine will not actually execute those instructions. So I'll comment them out just so you can see them here. That's 35 and 36. Next is 39, 40, and 41 we're going to look at. So G92, and this is a really important instruction, G92 sets a number as the current state. And it's talking about the extruder in this case, E for extruder. So it's saying the current position of the gearing on the extruder is the zero state. And then the next thing it wants to do, G1 command, is to extrude 20 at a speed of uh, 2 millimeters per second and then set to zero again. So what is this? This is the nose wipe, right? This is where it, it spits out about 20 of, uh, of filament and then it wipes it off on the edge and you gotta pick it up, you know, and then it goes and prints. I leave this in for this part. Now I nuked the part where it goes to the bottom, but I still leave it in. So basically it's gonna do it from the home position up here at G28 is where it homed at the top left corner. And then it's gonna do this spit out. And then I grab it off. That, I know that it's printing right and I grab that off and then I watch it go and reconnect with the print. So I leave that in. If you're having trouble with that, this is what you would want to take out. If you are having trouble with it spitting out or your print's too high, you know, you're printing really high or something like that, go ahead and take it out right here. All right. Next line to talk about is line 47. Um, I'm mostly talking about this because I don't know what M107 does. It's not in my cheat sheet. Um, so if anyone does, please throw it in the comments. That'd be great. I leave it in. It hasn't hurt me, so I'm just going to leave it. And then line 48, G0 is a go command. Again, similar to G1 where you just sends it somewhere. Um, and so what this is telling it to do is go to X about 150, Y150, and 0 0.2, which is the start point for my print. Your numbers will be different, but for this print, it was the start point of the print. You want to nuke that too, right? Because you don't want it to go anywhere in the Z0.2, because it means you're running into your print. So go ahead and nuke, uh, find that line, line. It'll be different for you, and uh, either comment it out or delete it, okay? So now you're in here, and from here, all the way down to wherever we go. We were at uh, 44116. 44116 right here. We're gonna nuke, except we're not gonna quite nuke at all. I'm gonna leave the last E that I see in here. So here's 44116 and the last E, the last time it set an extrude command was 44102. So I'm gonna leave that and I'll show you why, okay? So we know we actually don't need, where's my Z? There it is, we don't need, okay, those are comments. We don't need all that, right? But why did I leave it? Because I need this number, and here's why. If right now, the first command will try and extrude 1318, I don't know if that's millimeters, but 1318 millimeters worth of filament uh, on the first command, we don't want that, right? We just want it to extrude just the little bit that it needs. So remember we talked about a G92 command, right? So G92 sets the, what the current position is. So G92, and we're going to say E1318. I'm just covering it up. We'll just copy it. E1318.37954 equal to the, the last extrude command finished, right? And then we're going to delete down to the comments, to where the comments start. And this is our first next command. So now next time, it'll go from this E where I just defined our current position is now 1318.37954. And the next position, it'll extrude out to 1318.40216. So about the right amount of filament, right? Between those two positions. So it's really important to add this line. You have to add a G92 line and you should set it to the E number of the previously completed E instruction. I hope I said that clearly. And then I'm leaving all the comments in because they don't matter. And we have a speed, we have an extrude as it moves over, and then we just keep going from there. Actually, we're going to use it. Eh. Yeah, we're good. So that, and then it'll just go on. It'll keep going and going and going all the way to the end. I had a friend who had a problem where the bottom was filled with a bunch of gobbledygook. So I just want to show you this is what the bottom of your G code should end like end of G code, and you shouldn't have any gobbledygook down here. So just in case that's the same problem that happens to you, uh, that's it. So hopefully this is uh, useful for you. Hopefully the last 10 minutes you learned uh, what you need to do, and hopefully in the next uh, 20 or 30 you can get it to work on your side and save your print. Uh, I hope so, and good luck.